Yo, what's happening guys, it's Colossus X. So in this video, we're gonna be fixing the UI so that it works on Android devices. So, as you notice, at the moment we've got our basic level set up. And I'm just gonna quickly show you the error that we're gonna get at the moment. So, if I make this, say, four, and just so that it goes off the map a bit. Now if we play, now if you're making an endless runner where the character basically doesn't move, this is fine. We don't need to make any changes, but what we're doing at the moment is we're making a platform game. So with a platform game, your character is going to be jumping up on stuff, going outside the map, you're going to be moving across on the map and things like that. So what we want to do is, if I'll show you what, what the error is at the moment, so if we jump, get spiked again, oof. Right, so if we run over here, at the moment we're literally constrained to the proportions of the map, so the character's gone. He's there, but he's gone, so he's still alive. It's just that we can't see him. So what we have to do is we have to set up some views, and also set it up so that these movement commands move with our character. So let's do that. So what we're going to do first of all, we're going to go into our map we're going to make the map a little bit bigger so if we set the map to say 2000 width like that um, we set the height to say 1000 now if you hold shift and just click on each of these objects you can select them all make sure you select your virtual key as well and then drag that down to about here and then save now we also need to click on views so if you click views enable the use of views and visible when the room starts then what you want to do is you want to set this width and height up so that it works with the constraints of our character so I'll show you so with the width you want to set that to 700 height 400 now you'll notice the box is up here this is where we will see this is the size of the window so again 700 by 400 and the H bore, now I've already set this up, so it's 128 by 225 that you want to change that to. And make sure that it's following your hero character. Now if you save that and play it, what you should get is your character is the one being followed. Now you'll notice that it's basically a snapshot of the map that we're in, following the character. But the objects that we use to move left and right are still basically using the map maps coordinates rather than the actual views coordinates so if we go off the map again now I'm going to use W to jump you'll notice that the left and right they're gone like we've literally we lost them there's the jump coming up so let's fix it so that the left and right and jump follow our character so that we never lose them so what you want to do is go into the object left button add a step event control drag the code in and you want to type in x equals view underscore yeah sorry view underscore x view plus 100 and y equals view underscore y view plus say what 400 350 something like that so save copy that and then go into the object right button add a step event and again drag the code in and we want to change the X to about 300 might be a little bit less but we'll try it so now if we play that you'll notice that the left and right they're staying with us now we might need to um, move that right button a little bit closer to the left, it seems a little bit too far, so if we put it to say um, try 250 it's going to be a lot of trial and, er trial and error with the games, like just messing about and testing different variables, seeing what the um, works with each other, but I think that's fine for now, so as you can see the left and right keys are there, now if we move off the map it's moving with us basically so we're always on the screen in the right position but now the jump command is a little bit different because we're using virtual keys 
we're going to have to set it up. You know, it's a similar process, so we copy that. Go into the uh, object jump button first. Now the jump button is just our cosmetic, so this is just simple. This is literally going to be something like, say, 600. Now play it again. Yeah, perfect, pretty much. Right, perfect. So now that we've got that set up, save it. Um, you'll notice I'm a bit of a save hog. I always save every five seconds because I'm just used to things crashing on me and losing all the data. So if we copy that. Now we want to go into the object virtual key, virtual jump. Go into the create event and uncomment this so that we can see exactly where the virtual key is going to be. Now what you want to do is, in the virtual key add, you see where it's got X? Just basically copy these to here so you can see them. And then copy that bit. Paste that in. Copy that bit. Now it's probably going to be slightly different than the cosmetic one. So let's just play it and see what happens. So as you can see, it's here rather than over there. So what we're going to do is just delete this first of all. Move this to about 800. Let's just see what that looks like. Perfect, I think, nearly. We just need to move it up a little bit. So if we go to this one and go to, say, 300. There we go. So it, it's almost there, pretty much. We just want to move that over to the right a little bit more. So let's see. So 325 should be enough. Actually, delete that. Put that back. We want that to be about... Let's try 750. Hopefully that should be perfect. No, I've gone the wrong way. 825, let's try that. Yep, now we just need to lift it up again. And then, as long as that white box covers the jump button, there we go, so that is perfect. So as we click on that, he jumps, and the commands are following. So all we need to do is now is set the health bar to do exactly the same. So tick that, go into your create, comment that jump key again so you can't see it. Go into show health and go into the step event. Now we've already got that set up, so just to be, you know, good scouts, we just put the data in so that we know exactly what we're doing. So for here, you'd say slash slash change sprite. Right, now what you want to do is just type here slash slash position, just to keep it neat. So there we go. So <coughs> when you've got like a lot of code coming up, then at the bottom here, um, you'll just be able to organize it a lot better. So we want the height to be slightly different. So I'd say about 100. Let's just try that. Uh, right, so the position's a bit off, so let's move it over. Say, let's try 200. Yep, the height's a little bit too down, so as I say, it's just going to be a lot of trial and error with this, so try 50. And there you go. That is pretty much the basics. Now, what you need to do is just make sure that you've got, you know, your your, um, your L and R nice and clear. So what I'd do is I'd replace these buttons with something like maybe grey, so that because at the moment they're basically transparent with an L in the middle. So if you've got like a blue background, it's gonna blend in. So you probably want to have like a white button with an L in the middle. Just so that whatever the background is, the f you're going to be able to see the buttons. And as you can see, they all follow now, even the health and stuff like that. They're literally all connecting to the same point. Right, so that's it for this video. Uh, on the next video, we're probably going to pickups on that one. I know I keep saying pickups, but these are important things that need to get out of the way before we do any of the extra little features. So, 
yeah, hopefully I won't think of anything else that's important, and we'll go on to like putting items into the game and things like that. Alright, people, thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.